Dragon Mage, a book about a boy with a destiny and a friend. There might be dragons. There are definitely dragons. There's a lot of dragons, actually, which is great. So, uh, let's talk about it. Hello, I'm Pete. This is the Ponderings of Pete. I talk about fantasy. I talk about sci-fi. I talk about some non-fictional stuff occasionally. Today... We're going to be talking about Dragon Mage. Badoom. Dragon Mage, self-published book, which is awesome. What else about Dragon Mage? Well, guess what? It's about a boy. It's also, excuse me, thick. This is a thick book. Read a few months back. Two months back now, by now. I don't know. I read it a few months back. Did I like it? I did like it. Let's talk about why. This is going to be a non-spoiler review. Um, for the most part, I may put talk, when I talk about this book, I may spoil some of the first few chapters. I may spoil some of the world building. So uh, I will try to keep those as light as possible. Uh, but if you want to go in blind, but for the sake of some of the discussion, some of the discussion that I want to put forth, there will be light spoilers for some of the things that I talk about. Dragon Mage, it's about a boy. It's about a guy. You, it opens on a kid in a fishing village that is destined to save the world. Is this tropey? Yes, yes it is. But we'll get to that. This kid has no friends, and then he's being bullied, and he makes a friend that defends him. The interesting thing about this is this boy, this chosen one, he's not typical. This chosen one is actually on the autism spectrum. Uh, and, you know, when you start off the book, it's kind of interesting because you're not sure. This guy's kind of acting kind of different and you're like, why is he acting different? And then there's a point in the book where you're like, oh, wow, he's on the spectrum. Or at least that's how it was for me. And this isn't typical in a book, which is great. So this guy, he, this kid, he's in a village. He's destined to save the world. He has access to, he has more power than anybody's seen in a very long time. And at some point there are dragons. He's destined to become a dragon mage. Hence the title. So there are definitely dragons. Dragons do exist in this book. Dragons do appear in this book and dragons are awesome in this book. What more would you like to know? I can't really tell you more without spoiling kind of the plot. There's a dark power, there's an evil power. That there's multiple dimensions. It's it, it's 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 interesting. So, tropes. Is this book tropey? That's the first thing that you kind of probably think of when you look at this book besides its thickness, but we'll get to it. Is this book a tropey book? I would say sort of. It definitely plays into a lot of tropes, like the chosen one trope, the evil villain trope. Uh, but a lot of these are also to a certain extent subverted tropes within this book. Specifically, the chosen one trope is subverted basically um, because the lead character is autistic, as well as I don't think he has a, he does not have a typical hero's journey in the sense of like, there's an old mentor um, that leads him along. There are mentors, multiple mentors throughout the book, but he doesn't necessarily have a consistent old mentor that just guides him through the story and he has very little agency. Um, I feel like with this book, our character, our two main protagonists actually, have quite a bit of agency throughout the, throughout, um, the book, as I understand it. Um, there's definitely a lot of things that they're, you know, they may be told not to do, that they do do. And there are definitely things they do that aren't in line with maybe your typical storyline. And they're not just guided by others throughout the entire story, which is nice. So it is kind of tropey, but I think it's pleasantly slow. So, so it takes some tropes, it subverts them, so it takes others and follows them in a good way not to be overwhelming. The next thing I want to talk about is the length of the book. Um, this is a thick book. I already showed you that earlier. Why is this a thick book? Well, it's thick, not for your typical reason. So there's two, I think there's two types of thickness that I've encountered mostly, both of them involving being wordy. One would be the Steven Erickson from Manalzan Book of the Fallen. Um, he, his books are thick because there are a lot of storylines, there are a lot of things going on. And his characters like to philosophize sometimes. So uh, there, there's, there's specific things because there's so much going on, because his characters like to talk things sometimes and sometimes because his descriptions do kind of get wordy but like not not as much as some of other other people in my opinion his books are long 
many, many, many POVs. Um, Tolkien does this to a certain extent because there are so many different characters and switching between different groups. So that's another reason why Tolkien's along. But Tolkien's Name of the Wind and Jonathan Strange, Miss Norrell, I think are three examples of books that are wordy because of descriptive reasons. Um, whether it is because of world building reasons, because it is because of, I'm going to describe every blade of grass reasons, whether it's because of, I'm going to be very lyrical and flow you through the, 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 the scene. They are wordy because of, primarily because of descriptions and world building. Dragon Mage is neither of these. Dragon Mage is long because it is actually feels like three to four books crammed into one. Dragon Mage actually takes, going back to the trope conversation, um, takes something, takes an idea that would normally take three books to tell and actually puts it in one. So the world building, it doesn't really, there aren't many times when you would feel that there's, there's an info dump on you. Um, a lot of things you're led through gradually, especially regarding um, very specific things about certain characters. The, the, it's revealed in pieces and you could theoretically guess some of these things in advance because of fantasy tropes, but they're still, um, but it's not all dumped at you at once. Um, the ma in this book, the with the, like, if we're going to talk about world building, the world building, the magic system in its, of itself is simple and pretty soft to a certain extent. Uh, because the trigger mechanism is explained a lot, but like what the actual magic can do isn't specifically always explained. Um, and it, so it, there's an element of mystery and wonder to the magic, which I think the author plays with very well. Not only because the chosen one to save the world, there are certain things that are expected. And uh, because of that expectation, you could call the hard, the magic, like like the, the, the audience has an expectation for what the magic system will be able to do because of the tropes used, which I think was very interesting that she played into that. What else? The How the world is built. So you have two dimensions in this world that are split uh, because of backstory to the entire world reasons, which are explained to a certain extent, but they aren't always, everything isn't always explained at once. The villains are slowly spun out who exactly they are, what they are, who and what they are. Um, but again, it's not like dumped on you, but it, it is explained to a certain extent over time and you see the villain's power over time. There is some gray areas with some of the people on the other side of the fence, not the chosen one side of the fence. So you see a bit of a struggle there, which is nice to see in a book that feels like an ode to classical fantasy. So it's not, it's dense because of the amount of storylines in it. The, the, the length of the storylines. I definitely saw two or three I definitely saw two or three different places in this book that you could have chopped it up and split it into three or four books. But the author decided this um, ML Spencer decided to put it all into one, which actually was not a bad decision uh, because I think it worked better that way and it, and it was its own subversion in and of itself. I think if she had if if audiences had had to wait, you know, years for the next book only to know what exactly what was happening because it is, or to a certain extent, what was kind of happening. They wouldn't necessarily have been on the edge of their seats waiting for the next book. That being said, I think it's a beautiful book. I think the, the friendships portrayed in this book are very good. Uh, I think she portrayed Aram, our main character with autism, very, very well. Um, I'd be interested to see if any people that are on the spectrum that have read this book, whether or not they think that she represents the autism spectrum well. Um, and it also, it, it, portray, it portrays his struggles pretty well, as well as his friend, um, Marcus. I think this book would have suffered if there had only been one POV from the inside of our kids, of, of the kid's head, of a ram's head. Um, and that is why it has two POVs. So you have Marcus, who is his friend, and then a ram, who is our chosen one. And so the, that allows us to get out of a ram's head because a ram doesn't, he think he definitely thinks differently because of his autism. So having an outsider definitely clarifies that yes, this is him thinking differently. This isn't just weird writing, um, but it also provides a different perspective on somebody being like, okay, I know Marcus. I know Aram is different. How can I help him as a friend? How can I just be there for him? So that was really really interesting. So the friendship portrayed between Marcus and Aram was also a very definitely a highlight in this book for me and the struggles that they went through. It's also, you know, 
some of the main stuff going on in this story. So mm. um, the evil, the, the the villains were kind of one dimensional to a certain extent. Um, you have some between the different hierarchies. You have some struggles uh, with whether or not they were doing the right thing. So it definitely is a book where if you enjoy good characters, you enjoy friendships, um, and you, to a certain extent, enjoy tropes being done well, as well as some subtle subversions of them, then yes, I would definitely read this book. Um, if you are frustrated by Chosen One tropes, I would avoid this book, uh, because it is a mite predictable, but it's also comforting in that matter. This would be a great book for somebody who's newer to fantasy, or loves dragons, or loves just good versus evil. But if some of those things, some, some, but if good versus, like, flat out good versus evil frustrates you, again, maybe not the best book. But you never know. It might surprise you. I think this is a very good book. It reads like an ode to more, some more classical fantasy, uh, but is very accessible in its writing style. So check it out. If you like this book, definitely go check out the link in the, com in the description below. Um, it is an affiliate link, so I will make a little bit off of um, your purchase if you do end up purchasing it. If you like this review, give it a like. Comment down below if you've read this book and you liked it or not. Didn't like this book? Please tell me why. I, I probably, I, I, I think I've covered the bases on why people might not like, like this book, but I'm always interested to know why people don't like books. Because uh, I just, I like hearing people's different perspectives. Have a great day, night, whatever, and most importantly, get some rest. Thank you and goodbye.